Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm Isabel. If you're on GitHub at all and looking at core repos, you might know me as Tell the Machines because that's my username over there and on WordPress Slack. And I am here to talk to you about layout. And layout, I mean, layout is a super generic term. So uh, more specifically, <laughs> I am here to talk to you about layout in the context of the WordPress block editor. What is a layout in the context of the block editor, you might ask? It is a block feature that can be added to any block that has inner blocks. So any block that's a container for other blocks can potentially have layout. And in order to add layout to a block, you would go into the block.json file and you would add this experimental layout inside the support object. And you can set a default layout type in there also. So that would be the default, for, default layout for that block. And this sounds amazing because, you know, in the context of site edit editing, we, layouts are a very necessary thing. But before you get too excited about it, I want to add a couple of disclaimers. <laughs> Nothing is perfect, right? So disclaimer number one is that some layout types only work with block themes or hybrid themes. That a, little, a little bit of explanation about the terminology. Block themes are themes that are, are geared to work with the site editor. And they're generally composed of HTML templates and uh, a theme.json file, which will give you all the style information for that theme. Uh, hybrid themes are essentially they're classic themes, so themes that are built in like as WordPress themes have always been built, but you chuck a theme.json file in there so that you can make use of some of the extra styling functionality that that comes with block themes. So the essential point here is that both these types of, of themes have a theme.json file, and that's the reason that some layout types only work with those themes because they depend on certain settings in that theme.json file. And disclaimer, uh, disclaimer number two is that layout only works with blocks that render their inner blocks with the use inner block props hook. So if you, you're trying to add layout to a custom block, and it doesn't work, the chances are, especially if it's a really old block, because most blocks nowadays use this hook, uh, what it looks like in the code is something like this. So in your block edit function, you'll be adding the uh, use in the blocks props hook to the container of those in the blocks. If uh, your block edit function is not structured in, in this way, then the layout functionality won't work. Cool, so uh, what does this layout thing actually do, you might be asking at this point. And this is where I jump into the demo. And that's actually, okay, so let's look at the block editor. And I don't need my clicker now. And we have here a group block, right? And the group block, by default, comes with a layout type. Now this is, okay. So a couple of things that I should add before we jump fully into the demo. The, what I'm demoing here is the beta 2 for the next WordPress release. So that's the 6.2 release, which should be ready sometime in March. So what we're going to be looking at is the very latest features that are going into the next WordPress release. So the most up-to-date stuff possible. And the other thing is that the theme being used here is the 2023 default theme, and that is a block theme. So if, if you, by any chance, are more used to classic themes, there may be parts of the interface that are not familiar to you, but I'm, hopefully I'm going to explain everything as we go along. Cool. So this is a group block, and group blocks by default come with um, a layout type that we called constraint, and that the constraint is because uh, their inner blocks have a specific content width, and they will not go outside of that content width unless they are actually set. So I have an image block here, 
and in the alignment settings of the image block, I could set it to wide width, and it goes a bit wider. Notice that it's now wider than the actual text inside the block, or I could even set it to full width. And these are settings that in the block theme universe are only possible when the parent of that block has a, a constrained layout type that sets a content width, because you can only have a wide or a full width in relation to a content width that's not wide or full, that's like narrower. And that's, that's the logic. And if we look in here inside the sidebar, we have a layout section. And there's a little toggle here that says, inner blocks use content width. And it's set to on, which means that the inner blocks are using content width. Now, I can set this toggle to off. And what happens is suddenly, there's no content width. And these blocks inside the group are just taking up whatever width they have. If, if that text was bigger, then it would just go right to the end of the page. So there would be no limitation at all. So this essentially behaves like vanilla HTML pretty much. The only thing that makes this layout type different from vanilla HTML is that it sets a spacing between each block. So there, there'll be a top margin applied to every block, except for the very first one. The first one doesn't have any margin, as you might be able to see. And that top margin comes from the spacing value that can be set in the theme.json, just as the content width is set in the theme.json. And that is why neither of these layout types will work without a theme.json. Uh, some more controls that we have if we are using content width is these two fields, which may seem weird, like maybe at first glance when you look at those, you might think, ah, oh, I need to fill these in with some value. You don't need to. If you don't fill them in, if you leave them blank, then whatever the theme.json sets as the content width will be used. However, you can fill them in, and then you can have, like, I don't know, content width of 300, and then set a wide width of 600, and then the blocks inside will respect that, for instance. But if you clear it, the theme always sets a default. So. And then lastly, we have these justification controls. By default, when there is a content width, all the blocks are aligned to the center. But you can align them left or right. Now, this justification in, in the text universe is usually used a bit differently. It means that your whole text block is either aligned to one side or another. In this case, we're aligning the blocks themselves. So if you have text, so, so you can see that that paragraph block up top isn't actually, the text isn't aligned to the right, because it's only the block that's being aligned, not the content of the block. Cool. So this is pretty much all we can say about these two types of layout. Um, the group block is interesting because group is the only core block that has or, or can take any of all the types of layout that we have. So with those controls up there in the top right hand corner, we can transform what was a group block into a row. And that means that suddenly all its children are side by side. And no matter how many children there are, unless I'll show you the controls. So here in the sidebar, we have a completely different set of controls now. One of these controls allows us to wrap the contents to multiple lines. So the contents will just take up whatever natural space they would occupy as blocks. And uh, if, if there's no more space in the horizontal, then whatever other blocks are there will just wrap underneath. But if you set it to not wrap, then potentially they'll just squeeze into as small as they can go and always keep on the same line. So that's interesting, but most of the time we probably don't want to do that. And now I have to... <laughs> OK, cool. Let me just get rid of that. Uh, what settings do we have for Roblox, then, you might ask? Uh, we can set... So we can kind of toggle the justification, but if there is a really big block inside here, and it's taking up all of the space, then that's not really going to work. 
If this image was smaller, for instance, we might be able to deal with this. So, yeah, so you see, we can change the justification, we can make it go all to the right or all to the left, or we can add space in between the blocks. The other thing we can do is change the orientation, and when we do that, it actually becomes a stack block, which is sort of another, well, basically the name of a group block with this kind of vertical orientation. And how is that different from those other layout types that we saw? at the start. It's because these stack blocks can also be um, can also be set in different ways. So we can change you know, vertical alignment in the stack block doesn't do anything much unless it has a height. But the justification does. So we can align them, we can make them stretch, which kind of is only visible if I set say a background color. So you see how if the stack isn't stretched, by default, it's just going to be aligned to the left. But if you stretch it, it'll occupy all the space. But these, well, some of these controls maybe don't make a lot of sense unless we're actually looking at full layouts. So let us go and look in the site editor and see what, what practical applications these actually have in the context of templates. So this is the site editor. Um, this is the list view that sort of shows us all the blocks that we have in the site editor. And I'm going to open the settings tab so we can see our layout settings. You'll notice that there's this middle section, which is a group block. It has a content width. All its blocks are actually wide aligned. And so that's why we see it a bit wider than we were seeing that group block in the block editor. But the more interesting thing in the site editor here is the row, the use of the row block in the header. So a header is wrapped up in several little blocks. There's a first layer of group block that gives it the wide content width to match the main content area. And then we have a row block, and this has a, a justification set to space between. So we have one item at one end of the row and another item at the other end. We could change it, but basically, this is how 2023 comes by default. Now, supposing I wanted to add a site logo in here, because, you know, you want to have your logo at the top of the page. And I kind of, ooh, these buttons, <laughs> these buttons do not look good. Uh, okay, so let's say I want my logo here at the top left-hand corner of my header, but then I have the site title. It's because with the row block, we've spaced the items to have space between. The site title is suddenly in the middle, which doesn't really look good. I want it to be sitting next to the logo. So there's a bit of new functionality coming out in 6.2, which allows us to set... Um, a relative size for children of row and stack blocks. And that means that we can use it to position those blocks inside the row or the stack. So if I go in here, so these are the settings for the site title block. And I'm going to go into styles, that's styles tab. These, this two tab system in the sidebar is also a new thing that's coming out in 6.2 because there were starting to be a lot of controls for each block, and so they were now split into settings and styles, hopefully to make things a bit tidier. Now, if we go here under dimensions, I hope, oh, is that even visible? That's at the very bottom of the screen. Okay, maybe you'll just have to believe in me. There is a dimensions panel at the very bottom right-hand side of the screen. Oh, uh, maybe you can see it there. Oh, uh, yeah, you might be able to see it on that screen. I can try to zoom in a bit if that helps. Uh, yep, and in the dimensions, you'll see that we have a width dimension, and if we open that... Oh, bugger, how do I get out of this now? Um, yes, if we open that, we have a toggle with three values. The default value is fit, and then we have a fill value, and the fill value magically stretches that item to fill all the available space, all the remaining space of that container block that's not being used by other blocks. And that means that I can now push out 
the site title to sit next to the logo, which I think is kind of cool. There's another thing that we can do with this toggle, which is set it to fixed. And in that case, we can specify a fixed width. Say I wanted it to be like 500 pixels. That could also work if I wanted to sort of you know, position it. Uh, we can use other values than pixels here. There's percent, m, rem, viewport width, and viewport height, which can come in pretty handy. Um, yep. So that's essentially what I wanted to show with the header. What other things can we do? Ah, yes. There's another uh, pretty neat application for these new tools, which I will show you in a different template, which is the... Let's look at the 404 template. So the 404 template has a bit of a problem, which is... I might have to zoom out. Did I zoom in? I might have to zoom out again. In its natural state, the 404 template doesn't have a lot of content. It just has this search bar. And that means that when we have a footer, the footer just sort of floats awkwardly in the middle of the screen. It doesn't stick to the bottom of the page. Uh, designers do not like that sort of thing. And so they're constantly trying to come up with ways of this not happening. And now I'm pleased to tell you that in 6.2, it will be possible to not do this. And I can show you how. So list view again. We have three elements on this page, um, a header, so basically three sort of template parts, a header, a main content area, and a footer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the three of them, and I am going to wrap them in a group, and you'll see why. I'm going to wrap them in a group, and I'm going to turn that group into a stack block. OK, now something weird happens with the layout, because the stack block by default compresses all the items to the left-hand side. And that header is now looking extremely weird. But we can change that in the stack block settings by setting the justification to stretch. And that means that all of the blocks will now occupy the full extent of the screen, and it looks decent again. But the, the thing that we want to do is make the footer stick to the bottom. OK. So how are we going to do this? The stack block in its styles, and this is another feature that I'm pretty sure is a, a 6.2 feature. Yes, it is, which is minimum height. We can now add minimum height to a block. That's under dimensions in the, in the sidebar. And the minimum height can be set in relative units, such as viewport height. Now, what viewport height, for those of you who might not know, it pertains to uh, the height of the actual viewport. So the values would go from 1 to 100, and 100 is 100% 100 of the height of the viewport. But if we set this to 100%, because there are always headers and sidebars and things like that, we're going to get a scroll bar. We don't really want that, because it would be a bit silly to have a page with no content in it and a scroll bar. So we never set it to 100, but if we say set it to about 90, then that will make it look pretty decent. And footer, the footer's still floating up there, though. Wait, that, that didn't work. So there's one further thing that we need to do, which is now we grab the main content area, which is a child of a stack block, and so it has those sizing controls that allow us to, to arrange it proportionally to its parent. And we go into styles again, dimensions, where are we? Dimensions are here, and now we have a height control. And the height control appears because what we control, as a child of a stack group, we're interested in controlling the height. If it were a row group, as we saw earlier, it would be the width. But we get the same set of controls, which is fit, which is the default, and then fill, and then fixed. And now, hopefully, if we set it to fill, Yes, our footer has been pushed to the bottom of the page. So that works now. I think it works pretty well. What else do we have? Ah, ah there's another really neat feature that I want to show you. Right, should we save this? Yes, let's save this. This looks a lot much better than it did. Cool, let's go back to the home page because this feature that I'm going to show you will only work 
in, in the opposite scenario, which is we have a lot of content to scroll through. So how many of you have ever wanted to implement a sticky header on a website? And it's never really been possible to do that before with the site editor, but now it is. Again, I'm going to, oh, God, I, need a, <laughs> I always need a list view to navigate the site editor. There's so many blocks. Uh, but the list view is super helpful because it gives you an index of all the blocks and their children. And so, yeah, I, th this is a total lifesaver for me. So what we can do if we want to make our header sticky, what we have to do, and this, this may seem very unintuitive, but the first thing we have to do is wrap our header in a group. And this is because the header is a template part block type. It's kind of a, it's a template-y thing. It's not really a blocky thing. And so it doesn't really have styling controls. It doesn't have any controls at all. So we have to wrap it in a group block because the group block is the one that has the controls. Now, the group block, by default, will apply a content width. And so we have to turn that content width off. We actually, hang on, where was I? Yes, group block, no content width. But now we have a group block. We can go into this. See that sidebar panel that now appears, which is called position. It has a little drop down, and the only possible values right now are default and sticky. But that sticky is the one that we want, so let's make it sticky. And now if we scroll, hopefully, if we, why can't I scroll? Yes, if we scroll, our header is now sticking to the top of the page, but it looks like crap because the background is transparent. So the other thing that we have to do is give it a nice background color. It could be white, it could be grayish, off-white, whatever. I mean, it could be green if you want. It's probably not great as per the colors talk immediately before mine. Yeah, so let's make it gray. Okay, so we have a sticky header with not a great deal of work. Yeah, and... I think that's pretty much it for the demo. How am I doing for time? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what, sorry? Eight more minutes? Ah, that's pretty good, yeah. Cool, that'll be enough. Let's go back to our slides and slideshow. And now I need my clicker again. So the demo has been done. What's next, you may ask, because layout is a feature that is being continuously worked on. So layout is still actually an experimental feature. And the next step, uh, well, in my agenda at least, if I'm allowed to continue working on it, is stabilizing the API. Now, what do I mean by the API? It's what allows us to set the layout support in a particular block. And Currently, you can add layout in, into a block, as we saw in a previous slide, but it's still experimental layout. And what we want to do is take that experimental off it and make it called only layout. Now, the major step that's still to do, there's been a lot of continuous improvement, um, consolidation, making the, the internals work, more seamlessly, making them work with different types of block structure, which is kind of a challenge. Uh, there's been a lot of optimization of the styles that are output by layout. Uh, there, there are lots of, there can be conflicts, especially with older themes that have style sheets with CSS in them. So the idea is that the layout styles should have the minimum specificity possible, but they still need to be specific enough that they actually work. So that's, that's been a bit of a, a challenge. But the major step I was saying that's still to go is to allow enabling and disabling it at a block level in the theme.json file. So in your theme.json file, I think I have a code, yes. So in your theme.json file, under settings, you can have a block section and you can, for each individual block, like core block type, you can set or unset certain features. And the goal is that currently, if you try to do that, you might see the squiggle. The squiggle means that it's looked at the schema and it doesn't recognize that property. So that basically doesn't exist. So if you try to do that, nothing will happen. The idea is that, that so there's a little bit of work to be done in the back end to, to wire it up, but the idea is that 
once it's done, anyone would be able to go into their theme.json and either enable or disable layout for any block. I mean, only use it for blocks that have inner blocks. If you try using it on blocks that don't have inner blocks, then nothing will happen because layout really only applies to containers. So if your block isn't a container, then you know, there's nothing you can do. Cool, what else? Oh, this one's exciting. This one's actually really cool, which is exploring a grid layout type. Now, grid, as in CSS grid, if you know CSS, is a really cool way of making layouts responsive and making actually potentially really complex layouts with several columns and different types of widths. And in core, what this might look like initially is a layout type that can be applied to blocks. I actually optimistically created an issue recently. And the thing is, this has been talked about forever. But every time that this issue gets brought up, it's usually designers get super excited and they go all, like there's been a couple of issues like this opened by designers and they're all, yes, let's create this grid system where each template has like a 12 column grid and then you can snap the blocks to it. And, and it's perfect, it's like that, that sort of design system vision that designers have and it's great and I, I love that idea, it's awesome, but it's also going to be really complicated to implement. And so I'm rather hoping that we can like start with baby steps and create a layout type and start playing with it. So that's still to come sort of in the near to medium term future. Uh, that's another issue about grids. Grids, grids are excellent, grids are great. Uh, the next thing, the very probably one of the very next things for the next release is going to be another type of position. So you saw sticky, which is really cool. The other type of position that we might have pretty soon is a fixed position type. And actually some of the code to wire it up is already there. It just hasn't been done yet because sticky was sort of the first position type. It's kind of the easiest to implement in a way. So it was like, experiment with this and then see if it works and fix, which is a bit more complex. It will require controls to actually determine where we want the block to be fixed, like in what position on the screen. But that should be coming up fairly soon. And the next one, so this, this, I, this, this seems so small, but it's adding a layout, adding, so adding a layout support to the cover block. And you'd think that the cover block would already have it. Like People have been asking for this for ages. It's especially a problem for folks who build hybrid themes because they're, they're, when they add a theme.json to, the theme, to, the, to the theme, it suddenly forgets the, the classic um, theme-defined content width. And so it can, it can throw off the whole layout for the theme. So now, yeah. Cool, and this has actually been pretty complicated because the cover block has a completely different markup structure from most other container blocks. So that required a lot of rethinking of how layout actually works, which is why it hasn't been done yet, but there is a pull request open on GitHub and we're working towards it. So if this is one of the features that you've been expecting to see, uh, expect it soon in the next version of the plugin. Sadly, not for 6.2, but coming, how can you help? Last but not least, if you want to get involved, go over to the Gutenberg repo on GitHub, and if you can code, help out with code. If you can't code, help out with testing, test the latest versions of the plugin, open issues. If, if you find anything wrong, complain to us, please. We love complaints, we love feedback. Uh, negative, politely worded negative feedback is great. It is super helpful to us. Uh, so yeah, please do get involved. There's a layout um, label in the repo which can be helpful to find issues related to this specific feature. And that's it. This is my cat, Charlie, and thank you for listening to me.